Hi folks, and um, I uh, really happy to be uh, with you uh, through the uh, technology of the web conference. And uh, uh, I was really, uh, I was expecting to be at, at Smyrna again this year, but the law decided otherwise. And so may his will be done. And nevertheless, um, uh, we we can share God's words, and uh, that's why that's what we're gonna do now. And we already pray, and um, so we're gonna uh, enter wide array in our message. And as you can see, um, this message is um, is uh, the first part of a three part message on a Psalm 91. And this year, the Lord inspired me to, um, to give more a, um, uh, it would be like a, I would say devotional, but um, to let us think about God's care. The and how is now we can be and under the shadow of the Almighty, because many things are happening right now in our world. Our world is overwhelmed, and it's really time for us to be under the shadow of the Almighty and to know how to be under the shadow of the Almighty. So let us start, and I invite you to open up the Bible with me in Psalm 91, verse 1, and we're going to, in this part, consider verse from verse uh, 1 to verse 8. And tomorrow, we're going to continue, and after tomorrow, again, until we finish the psalm. He that dwelleth, let me put that for you on the screen also. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. What is what is this dwelling? Because we are told that he that dwelleth. So there is a dwelling place. And what is this dwelling place? Psalm 27, verse Four and five says, One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the day of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall. Hid me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hid me. Um, he shall set me up upon a rock. So this dwelling is the house of God. This sanctuary. The sanctuary is the place to dwell. That where we should dwell. Okay. And... There, there, in the house of God, the sanctuary, and especially in the heavenly sanctuary, because this is the real place where God is, personally. When we, by faith, abide there, we are under the shadow of the Almighty. But what does that mean? What does that mean? Let us continue our reading in the Bible. Numbers 9, verse 15 and 16 says, And on the day that the tabernacle was read up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, namely the tent of the testimony. And at even there was upon the tabernacle as it were appearance of fire until the morning. So it was always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. So notice that 
there was this pillar of clouds, okay, these clouds, and was covering, was covering this, the tabernacle, and in fact, it was giving shadow to all the people of Israel, it was worshipping toward this sanctuary, okay, is that clear for you? So, is when we are in the sanctuary by faith, we are under the shadow of the Almighty, okay, and in this cloud was a character, there was someone in this cloud, and the Bible says this, um about it about him in exodus chapter 14 verse 19 and the angel of god which went before the camp of israel moved and went behind them and the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them so there was there was the angel of god in the cloud the angel of god the end of the lord was inside the cloud leading the people he was providing if you can say he was providing this uh shadow okay he was providing this shadow and the bible tells us who he this angel the Bible tells us that he's not an angel by nature, but he is an angel by function. And we can read that in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1 and 4. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1 and 4. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea verse 4 now and did all drink the same spiritual drink or they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was christ that rock was christ he says so jesus was this angel an angel by function it is a messenger the one who is providing God's words to the people. And he was the one that was providing this shadow, that was protecting the people. And dwelling God, dwelling God implies to accept Jesus as his son. I repeat that for you. To dwell, to dwell in God, in the most high imply to accept his, uh, his Jesus as his son and this is what the Bible says this is what the Bible says let's pay attention to the following first John chapter 4 verse 9 and 15 first John chapter 4 verse 9 and 15 we read in this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him and verse 15 notice that whosoever shall confess that jesus is the son of god god dwelleth in him and he in god so it is when we accept god's son god's only begotten son that we are dwelling as the Bible says, we are under the shadow of the Almighty. We are dwelling in His secret place, friends. It's not in any other God, not in any other uh, belief. We must accept the Son to have this dwelling place, friends. We must accept God's Son to have this dwelling place. How many of you? has accepted that son it's not the case now 
It's time to do it, friends, to accept Jesus, the Son of God, as your personal Savior. And one of the most beautiful and comforting passages of his prophecies, um, in one of his uh, beautiful passages, Isaiah, Isaiah mentioned the pillar of cloud and fire. And it describes the care that God will take of his people in the final great struggle with the power of evil. And let us consider that. And it's for us, friends, for our future. Pay, let's pay attention to that. Isaiah 4, verse 5 and 6. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud of smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night for upon all the glory shall be a defense and there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from uh, the heat and for a place of refuge and for a cover from storm and from uh, rain so we have this assurance brothers and sisters and my dear friends, that if we, by faith, seek God in the sanctuary and in accepting, and notice that carefully, in accepting Jesus as being his son, we are dwelling there, friends. And he is, he is going to protect us. He's going to protect us during this difficult time that we come and we are already in this difficult time but bible tells us that he is this is going to be worse so we need to be sure that we have a refuge and now let us follow let, let us continue so, sorry let us continue and reading verse 2 of psalm psalm 91 verse 2 I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. The psalmist makes this sentiment the special personal expression of the satisfaction of his need. And he expressed that the Lord the Lord, which Lord, by the way, and let, let, let me stop here. Previously, he said that the Almighty, friends, we are talking about the Almighty. So, if we are talking about the Almighty, does that mean that we are omnipotent in the sight of us? Yes, friends. If we are, if we have God as our refuge, friends, the Almighty, we have omnipotence inside of us if we are in His Son. God is omnipotence, He is the Almighty, and He will care of us. So we have this blessed assurance, friends. Never forget that. Never forget that. God is going to put His omnipotence inside of us for us is going to work uh, mightily for us and nothing if we hear him is going to um uh, resist to his omnipotence inside of us and we were saying god as a refuge and notice how he can be a refuge for us. Psalm, uh, Proverbs, sorry, Proverbs 18, verse 10. Proverbs 18, verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. What does that mean? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it it's in when we are praying friends 
when we are praying do you appreciate the time of prayer the secret prayer i'm not talking about any public prayer public prayer is good things okay we are off with that but we are speaking here about secret prayer and we are alone with our god in this moment friends we must be sure that we have a refuge in god if we have this pleasure to commune with god by prayer by faith while he is in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary and we are here we will find that he is a refuge for us a strong tower and he also says in verse 2 my god i would say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god most of you are following the services from the united states of america and in God we trust is the motto mounted on coins of the United States of America, of your nation, for those who are there. And what is the characteristic of a nation who trust in God? What should, what should that be? The Bible says this. Deuteronomy, first, uh, chapter 26, sorry. Deuteronomy chapter 26 verse 19 oh sorry verse 7 uh, 17 to 19 okay Deuteronomy chapter 26 verse uh, 17 to 19 thou hast avouched the Lord this day to be thy God and to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and to hearken unto his voice and the lord has avouched thee this day to be his particular people as he hath promised thee and that thou should shouldest keep all his commandments and to keep thee high above all nations which he hath made in praise and in name and in honor and that thou mayest be an holy people unto the lord thy god as he has uh, spoken, sorry, as he has spoken. So it's when we are keeping God's words, God's commandments, when we are doing his will, we are keeping his law. But sadly, in order to allow its people, and after that, the world, which will fall <coughs> to buy and sell, the United States of America will soon, friends, soon. Look at this. Look at the shape of the world today. I tell you, it's really soon. We'll soon ask to reject their trust in God in breaking His fourth commandment, according to the prophecy of Revelation 13, <clears throat> and. We must be sure and make sure that we keep our trust we keep what god has commanded us if we want to have a refuge during this time otherwise this very money that you have in your hand written in god we trust We be treason to our God. Let us continue. Verse 3. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fall and from the noisome pestilence. Satan sets many snares for the children of God. But those who obey to God will escape all of them. As we can read in 
Psalm 119 and verse uh, 109 and 110, my soul is continually in my hand, yet do I not forget thy law. The wicked have led a snare for me, yet I hear not from thy precepts. You see, friends, we must be faithful to God, and He will keep us, protect us from the snares. The Bible also talk about the pestilence. I'm almost sure that you understood that this COVID nineteen stuff is a pestilence, a contagious disease of. Um, uh, of great size, if I can say so, if you can understand what I what I mean. And Bible prophecy tells us that this is a sign of time, and that's why uh, I was saying to you in the beginning that we are we can be sure that we are at the at the end of the time of the end. Okay, and. Let's read um, Matthew chapter 24, verse 6 and 7. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nations shall rise against nations kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places so notice the tree there is a company of three things that go together you have the uh the, the war you are a the the pestilence and you have also famines. When you study pestilence, you see that these three things, the sword, or otherwise the, the, the war, the pestilence, the famines, they go together. Of course they go together because when you have pestilence, this affects the agriculture, the, pro the productivity of a country. And this is what is happening. Maybe you have, well, you, you you check on the news and you see in some place of, of our world and even in some place here in France we have some uh, portion of the country that we heard that people uh, people experimented farming you see and the next things the next thing logically next things is war okay this word and we can say that it is a kind of word that we are living in when we see the civil war that your country is in and my country is in now due to this uh, all this injustice that people are protesting against okay and this will become worse friends this will become worse but god god told us he gives us a promise and promise as you may know always have conditions so let's consider this promise with uh this uh, uh its condition a second chronicles chapter 7 verse 13 and 14 if i shut up heaven that there be no rain or if i command the locusts to devour the land or if i send pestilence among my people if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wickedness uh, the weak ways sorry, then will i hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land president donald trump when covid 19 started ask for national day of prayer and this fall on sunday is that is that claiming the promise 
God asked his friends to to turn from a wickedness. To humble ourselves, to pray, to seek his face. But to seek the Pope face in Sunday, friend, is not, is not at all really, really seeking God. So we must be sure to meet the condition so that the promise may be fulfilled. But I have a good news for you. Even though your president is going to uh, follow Pope, or if it is another, I'm not making a pro I don't, I, I, I'm not making a prophecy here, Donald Trump. But th what I mean is that no matter what happened, even though the nation doesn't repent, and any nation, in my nation, if I, if you, if us as a people or as individual, we meet the condition here, even though these things happen, we're going to be protected by God. This is the truth here, and we can say amen to that. Let's continue with verse with verse 4. So, 91, of course, verse 4 now. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Notice here that we are told about uh, covered with his feathers, okay? And previously, the um, verse verse one was talking about under the shadow, okay? So there is a connection to make here. And in order to make this connection, we need to read uh, chapter 32 of Deuteronomy from verse 9 to verse 12. Deuteronomy 32 from verse 9 to verse 12. <clears throat> For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye, as an eagle stirred up her nest, flew there over her young, her young, uh, spread uh, abroad her wings, take them, bereft them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him so notice that god is using this illustration this image of spreading his wing to cover his people and to bear them in fact and to in fact protect them this is the general ideas and that something happened after that said something that prevents the people to have this protection. Let us read the same chapter, and but uh, from verse 15 to 19. But Jeshurun, which is a name for Israel, okay, another name for Israel, waxed it fat and kicked. Thou hast waxed it fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forced to God which met him and lightly esteemed the rod of his salvation. I provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they he to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came nearly up. Whom the fathers fears uh, fear not of the rock that begat thee, thou art thou art unmindful, and hast for, forgive um, for, for, forgotten God that formed thee. 
And when the Lord saw it, he abode them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. This verse are really interesting because they are depicting almost exactly what happened in the seven-day Adventist movement. It was protecting people and strange God. They brought up strange God in the movement. They brought up the Trinity. And in these conditions, friends, God cannot protect us because remind you, remind what we what we saw in the beginning. We must accept Jesus as the Son of God to be under the shadow of the Almighty. But when we accept the Trinity, we have no refuge. We have no refuge. We are shelterless. We are shelterless. And in these conditions, and about this condition, Jesus said some things that we should keep in mind. And we must consider that seriously. We must consider that seriously. And let us read that. Matthew 23, verse 34 to 38. Matthew 23, verse 34 to 38. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of the righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Zacharias. Uh, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stone them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together? Even has a hen gathers her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. When he rejects those God sent to us to give us the message, his message. When we reject, for example, works of our pioneers, like the leading men in the movement, the Seventh-day Adventist movement do, oh my friends, as I said previously, we are shelterless. Jesus could not, Jesus could not protect us under his wings anymore. And especially when we call these pioneers, heretics, and all these things. Oh, seven day Adventists, seven day Adventists. How to kill the prophet? You kill the man that I sent you. How can you be protected in the time of trouble that is coming? By repentance, by repentance, accepting accepting the truth. This is the only way, friends. Otherwise, otherwise, we can partake of the shedding of the blood with the papacy. The papacy will persecute the true Christian, the true believer, the true preachers. Because we're gonna enter the image of the beast, friends. Killer of his truth. Because Jesus says, Mark 13, verse 31, heaven, oh sorry, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. You see, God's words is a firm foundation. And it's not going to pass. So we can 
we can we can place our trust on God's word and even though the heaven will be shaken the elements of the earth will not be shaken because we would have trust in the Lord in keeping his word and second Samuel chapter 22 verse 3 tells us the God of my rock in him will I trust he is my shield and the horn of my salvation my high tower and my refuge my savior thou savest me from violence you see God is going to protect those who trust in him those who put all their trust in him and he is going to protect them from violence physical violence but there is another kind of violence and we are going to to consider that in a few minutes a few seconds but for that let us jump to verse five verse five of course of psalm 91 thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the horror for the arrow sorry that fly by day okay so when we trust in god that this way we do not have to be afraid of terror by night nor for arrow that flight by day what does that mean let us read psalm 3 verse 9 and 6 oh sorry verse 5 and 6 verse 5 and 6 i let me down and slept i awaked for the lord sustained me i will not be afraid of thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about is that clear for you how do you understand the text i have a question to ask you do you sleeping well at night you you may say that oh what are you asking this question this is a really simple question friends there are people even believers that do not sleep well at night they have a lot of issues they have a lot of you know problems and they are discouraged and they 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 cannot find good rest when they arrive on the bed they stay a long time a long time upon the bed without uh finding uh rest because they have a lot of problems i'm not stoning any people who have other issues but i am talking about here about those who are problems you know they are scared and everything's like that and they cannot find rest when they arrive upon the bed how can we solve that what is the solution of god for that yes. let us read proverbs 3 um verse 21 to 26 proverbs 3 and verse 21 to 26 my son let not them depart from thine heights keep sound wisdom and discretions so shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck then shalt thou walk in thy way safely in the way safely and thy foot shall not stumble when thou liest down thou shalt not be afraid yea thou shalt lie down and die and that in and thy sleep shall be sweet be not afraid of sudden fear neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh for the lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken 
You see, it's when we give God's wisdom. Who is the wisdom of God? Jesus. Jesus is the wisdom. Colossian, uh, First Corinthians, um, First Corinthians um, one, uh, verse twenty-four tells us that, and even in Proverbs eight, when we keep Jesus, keeping His words, and we are meditating upon Jesus' words, and we are, we are um, forsaking our burdens. The feet of Jesus, we can have a good night of rest, friends. So, if it's not the case, or if it was not the case until today, I invite you to try Jesus, and you are not going to be deceived. And the Bible tells us about arrow. Arrow. You know, there are physical harm or should I say weapon? There are physical weapon that people can bring before us. And but there are uh, I should say symbolic weapon and I would say spiritual weapon. And you know, before trying to to kill you physically, Satan will try to kill you spiritually. And uh, Jesus said that the word that I tell you are spirit and life. So he's going to kill you with words. Don't believe me. That's fine. Believe in God's word. Psalm 64. Psalm 64, verse 1 to 9. Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Praise of my life from fear of the enemy. Hear me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who with their tongues, who with their tongue like a sword, and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words, bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune, lying snares privately. They said, Who shall see them? They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thoughts of every one of them and the, the heart is deep. But, and listen to that, but. God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly shall they be wounded. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. And all men shall fear and shall declare the work of God. For they shall wisely consider of his doing. You see, we are living in a time, as you understood, a difficult time. And we are going to face the powers of this world, which will be influenced by the enemy. And we are going to be falsely accused, right? We are going to be falsely accused. And I'm speaking the future for you. But I think that you are maybe or it already happened to you to be false accused. <laughs> if it was a case, or if it is a case, or if one day after this message, you are falsely accused, friends. God is preparing you for the time of trouble to come. The persecution to come when they are going to falsely accuse God's people that you don't need to be afraid you don't need to be afraid because God says you shall not fear of that why because he is a refuge my refuge your refuge he don't say that the hour will not come he did not promise that, friends. 
he did not promise to um to prevent the arrow to come upon you in your back but he said you shall not be afraid why if you trust in the lord amen yeah friends. we must trust in the lord so let's do that let's continue with verse 6 of psalm 91 now for the pestilence that walk that walked in darkness now for destruction that was noonday okay so we we already talked about the pestilence in the previous in the one of the previous verses um so we'll not again dig uh, deep here but the bible is speak about destruction here okay related to pestilence and we have a verse in the new testament that gives us instructions that gives us instructions and the way we should be um, behave um to to do not fear these things let us read first corinthians 10 verse 6 to 12. first corinthians 10 verse 6 to 12. Now these things were out. Sorry, we start. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not last after evil things as they also lasted. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us come fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand neither uh let us tempt christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents verse 10 now <clears throat> have an issue of, okay now it's okay neither murmur as some of them also murmured and where it is tried of the destroyer now verse 11 now all these things happened unto them for examples and they are written for our admonitions upon whom the end of the world are come <clears throat> wherefore let him that think he stands shall he lest he for i don't think that paul was living more in the time of the end than you and i so these verses are are more for you and i than for four times because we are living friends in we are living, you see, the time of the end. We are living at the end of this time. Right? So, idolatry, immorality, defiance, and murmuring about God or against God. These things right, must not be named among us in our lives. These things must disappear at all otherwise God, God could not and will, will not protect us from distractions and terrible things to come remember Moses remember Moses he was he, 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 he didn't he didn't circumcise his child and he didn't obey to God and he was going to Egypt but the angel of the Lord came and he had an issue with him and his wife had to obey for him. Otherwise, he would not pass through. So you see, we should obey. No matter what happened, no matter what father, mother, children, wife says, you must obey. Otherwise, you will not pass through, friends. So let us continue. <clears throat> Verse 7. 
Verse 7. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. You see, we are going to see disobedient people. Disobedient people. For all of the world, as we can uh, read in Exodus 12. Uh, verse 12 and 13 for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smit all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment I am the Lord and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are and when I see the blood I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I meet the land of Egypt. So, the children of Israel were protected because they accepted God's sacrifice. Symbolically, um, Jesus, which was symbolically represented by the Jesus' blood, by the blood of, of the Lamb. And they were protected. They were protected, but not, but not the firstborn of age, of the world. But it's not only in the world. We are going to see people fall inside the church. We are going, we are, we are going to see this is happen inside the church, as it's happened in. Ancient Israel. Let us read that. Numbers 14, verse 37 and 38. Even those men that did bring up the evil reports upon the land died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of the men that want to search the land, Live still. These false brethren that bring evil reports. They were unfaithful brethren. And because of them, these two faithful servants of the Lord were about to be stoned by the people. But God reacts. Because he is a living God, and he would not allow his servant. And he did not, sorry, he did not allow his servants to be stoned. So he took the things in his hand. He took control of the situation. So they see people falling in the world, but also in the church. Ezekiel 9, friends. Ezekiel 9. And sometimes it can also happen before Ezekiel 9 when wickedness is hot. Whatever the danger, it will not touch him. Those, it, it will not touch him whose trust, sorry, is in God. Under God's protection, he is safe. And such is a conviction, a conviction that gives man a firm faith when his hour of supreme danger comes. And now we are going to finish with verse 8. Verse 8. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. In the land of Goshen, the Israelites had seen the calamities that befell uh, the Egyptians. As we can read in Exodus 14, verse 31, And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. What did they do? 
nothing. They just trust in God. They trust and obey. They apply the blood and they were protected. They didn't have to do anything except to accept God's love through the sacrifice of his son. And today it is the same. In the desert, Caleb and Joshua saw the other ten false witness fall into the end of God. You will see the punishments of the wicked, but you will not be a part of it if you trust and obey God. And let us conclude with Psalm 37, verse 34 to 40. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a gathering bay tree. Yet he pushed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man. Verse 37. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace, but the transgressors shall be destroyed altogether. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. So, friends, what we can say arriving here is that we must seek God by faith. Seek Him in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary, where the final atonement is going on, is ongoing. And there we shall be under the shadow of the Almighty. The omnipotence of God will be inside of us, will be at our benefits. And we shall be protected. We shall be protected by the Lord. And he shall protect us for of everything that we see about violence, about violence physically, but also violence word. And he shall be our refuge if we seek him in prayer, if we are men and women of prayer. He's going to protect us. If we give up every idolatry, immorality, murmuring, all these things, if we trust him and obey him. He is going to protect us. And we shall be safe under the shadow of the Almighty. May you and I be under the shadow of the Almighty. And I invite you to pray to conclude this message. Our Father in heaven, we are so thankful for your word, where we find these words, and we realize that you are the Almighty God, and you are able to do great things for us, provided that we we trust in you, provided that we seek you in truth, provided that we keep our mind upon you and we trust in you, 
we obey your word. So please help us to take time for prayer. When we are in danger, also when we are in so-called time of peace, when we have a peace time, may we seek you, take uh, the, uh, we have the custom the, to, uh, to seek you in prayer so that we can have a refuge when we are in adversity and uh, we accept uh, Jesus, your son, as a savior so that we can be protected. And bless us, Father. And this is the prayer that we ask you in the name of Jesus. Amen.